Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. Another, another show. Uh, Randy Filio still. He's, he's, it's like it's here. like it's like he needs to be wound up every time he. We, you say that. It's like, ah. All right, I'm go, I'm good now. I'm, I'm, yep. I can I can go. Yep. One minute. Be, we're done. Just I, I'm just later. wondering why the why the uh, the is that like a blade that you're? It's just in case I. You see guys got a sharp object near me. That's dangerous. <laughs> um, so, um, hey, I wanted to start off today with the eclipse. Yep, the song from uh, Pink Floyd or the actual eclipse from yesterday. I'll, I'm glad I wasn't on the road. Let's put it that way. Well, I was on the road yesterday, but I was on the other side of the uh, of the traffic. So yeah, you should turn the mic towards yeah. you so they can. And nobody wants to hear me anyhow. So. Uh, so, but it was it was uh, on the way. We, Where'd you go we, on Sunday? We went to Boston uh, because my daughter was flying in. We've had the, the the grandkids for since Tuesday of last week. Yep. And um, the uh, and so we drove down. She flew in on Sunday night, and we um, I'll tell you when we were getting on the on the highway, the traffic was backed up heading north. Oh and right, heading north, trying heading to north, come back heading home. north, eighty nine and ninety three, and then um, on the way back. We are again on the wrong, uh, on the right side of the road because on the on the other side everybody was coming back, and it could have been farther. But what I could see is at least to exit five the traffic was backed up, getting on uh, heading back down um, South ninety three. Basically, and, from and, what I read, it, it was backed up to Burlington. <laughs> yeah, it just I, I heard I heard that people couldn't get to their destination, so they just pulled over on the side of the road and watched it. Yep, and then and, get stuck in traffic. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like. And my thing was is you know I was in Boston so they were they they were in the ninety percentile I don't know it was the high nineties but but it was it still it all did really it was interesting uh, I had my glasses so you know or I would be like like this oh yeah yeah it burns um, on retinas but I um I watched it and it was interesting but it never it, it got gray it didn't get dark yeah now yeah. my understanding up north it got dark but. Um, and and my thing is, you know, I'm cynical with all this stuff. Is that, you know, the the good thing about it for all the people that really enjoy that type of thing, that's great. For me, uh, it was knowing that the maybe I don't know how our winter revenues are this year, you know, for the state of New Hampshire and yeah. Vermont too, but state of New Hampshire. I'm just one. I'm wondering if this helped our numbers this year. This one because the hotels were booked. Yep. Up north, they were booked, and they were paying an arm and a leg for rooms. You know, when when oh, there were no it, discounts. It's, it's 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 it's. I get I get all this. It's uh, supply and demand, supply and demand. Right. It's it's just gouging, gouging, and um, I mean, you know, I heard at one place they were charging like eight hundred dollars a night. Yeah. Well, you know, some people. Let's face it, your average person is not going to pay the 800 But I guess on the supply and demand thing, if you can get some wealthy family from Connecticut, New York to come up there and pay it, so be it. Understood. Yeah, you know, I understood. But it's still, it's just, but it, it, it but if it generates revenue, my, my thing is, all right, then let it be. Let it be. Uh, but well, th think what was busy, Chris, on, on the way up. Because you have to, you know, for the most part, coming out of Mass, and a lot of people from Connecticut, New York. The liquor store. Liquor stores. Dri drive through liquor stores, literally. Um, that's what they were saying. I, I was talking to my, to my wife about it last night. About They were talking about how traffic was backed up literally all the way to Burlington, Vermont. Yeah. I mean, it was traffic all the way there. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I said, uh, boy, I bet, I bet the liquor stores are making w record revenue yeah. off this. And no sooner than I said that, they said there was not a parking space left at the rest area in the southbound lane. Yeah. You know, yeah. and they weren't in there getting a tuna fish sandwich. No, they're backed. They were actually backed up. They're backed up in that place. Yeah. And so my, it was just, but um, yeah. Stocks it's, up in the booze. And all the glasses, those glasses, that one-time glasses, that company that you know, whoever made them, you know, multiple companies made them. I get it, but and now they say, um, save them, repackage them, and send them back to us because we're going to be sending them. There's another eclipse coming, but it's not in this. 
It's this side of the a world. Yeah, and, over and in Spain, I think. Said, I yeah, and so they're going to repackage them and send them there. I'm like, those guys are smart. They're going to repackage it, get all these back. Resell them. And resell them. So, yeah. <laughs> there, there was definitely money to be made off, off the Eclipse. I was reading up in Upper Vermont, some of the smaller towns, yeah. and somebody had just, just read a small thing online today, and they were opening a, a deli. Yeah. And they weren't going to open it yet. They weren't quite ready. Yeah. But they were like, we're opening. And yeah, they just got demolished. But once again, they, they got right, the revenue. They got the next two months paid off. They're, they're all set. But I was reading where a lot of people, you know, thought they'd be smart, look at their GPS to take a shortcut home along the back roads. Yeah, that probably wasn't too smart because everybody was doing that. Right. They got off the interstate and got right. on like, you know, a little back road. And that was it. And I was reading where people from Keene, you know, seven hours you know, to get back from yeah. Vermont, you know, it's a long, one thing I, my, my wife actually enjoys being in traffic. She likes car rides at, at, at Christmas time. You know, how Island street would always back up. She thinks that's great. It's, you know, Christmas Carol stuck in traffic. I'm like just crushing the steering wheel. I hate being caught in traffic. It's all, all fun and games until you need to go to the bathroom. Oh, that too. And then all the claws come out. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's a good point. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll drive, you know, 20 miles around to avoid sitting in traffic. I hate sitting in traffic, mm -hmm. but yeah, 93, 95, 89, all of them, but yeah. Hey, somebody made some money. Good for them. Yeah. You know, we, uh, I drove, we drove to Robin Hood park and sat on a, uh, one of the benches beside the water Yeah. and just we were in a looked play. at our 96% coverage, whatever it was. Yeah. We, we, uh, we were in a playground in Boston because we had the grandkids still. So we just sat on a bench and they played while we watched and we watched and talked and watched and talked. Yeah. It was, it was, it was nice. kind of cool. It was nice, you know, it, you know, again. And it was right next to a, uh, next to a um, what's it called? A shack Shack. shack. I, bet it, I bet it was an eatery. Shake Shack. I've never been to one of those. It was interesting. Been there now, though. Yep. Yep. It's kids, all good. Kids liked it, so... So everybody's yeah, everybody survived. Everybody everybody made it back. But yeah, I was reading last night just how long it took people to get home, and I was also reading that up in North Country, um, a lot of people drove their electric cars up there. Well, a lot of people didn't realize coming from the cities, there's no chargers up in northern New Hampshire. They said there was like one charger in one of the towns up there, and there was like 40 cars, electric cars, waiting in line to get charged because there was no chargers. And you know those. And they were caught, caught in traffic. So they're using up some of their electricity. Well, and here's the other thing. The uh, push electric car. I mean, they're, they're, those they're, batteries, those batteries are heavy. Are heavy. Yeah. So just saying. No, my last couple of years of my career there, sold a few electric cars. And right now, in years to come, the batteries will be more compact and lighter. But right now, yeah, you don't want to be pushing an electric car. No. Just, just no. abandon it. Yep. So, so yeah, that's interesting. So anyhow, what else is going on in the county, Chris? Anything exciting? It's actually it's it's knock on wood. It's we're just you know when doing you hear our nothing business. when you don't hear when, anything, when, that's when, usually good news. The, we're just doing our business. You know, like I told you a few weeks ago, we're you know we passed our budget, and I remind the people that it was a negative zero point zero nine percent taxes to be raised, which is always a good thing. Yeah, it's damn good. And and um, but you know just no, they're just everybody's just doing their jobs, and you know we're. Yep. We're slowly trying to get our census up at the uh, up at the nursing home to 110, um, so that 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 helps everybody, especially the hospital out. So, yeah, we're we're looking at some other projects out there. Some things, oh, staffing, housing, and things the like staffing's that. Staffing's still an issue, right? Uh, staffing's a, always going to be an issue yeah. for us, like it is for everybody else out there. It's the top three issues: housing, staffing, or staffing, housing, and uh, childcare. Yeah. If somehow we could come up with the the magic solution to those three, uh, we would be in. Be all set. We would be. We would. And in one of the one of the things I think it is, is that we need to do a lot more advertising in the South, in tornado alleys and and places that flood and say, what are you doing? Yeah. You, you know, smart. Oh yeah, yeah. We we have winter, but winter is nothing like it used to be. Right, which yeah. are which are here is like so, winter is so you can come, yeah, you know, and and we we understand winters up here. You're gonna have to buy some tires that are decent. That's what I I was saying to somebody this morning. I don't get it. I don't get it whether you live in the south or wherever. 
you now know you've been forewarned that winter is everywhere or sleet or freezing or whatever right where it get some get some some tires that are appropriate you yeah, know? especially up here you, you see it all the time you know somebody out just with a summer tire on but you're right you know and it's only one time investment for the most part and if you put them on four months a year it saves your summer tires that much longer but yeah you know, i'll watch people just I, I saw somebody this last little snowstorm that we had down off from school street they had front wheel drive just spinning away, yeah. little summer tires, couldn't move, yeah, yeah. little hill. Yeah, I, I, um, I had to rent a rent a car, and I had a choice between uh, four wheeler or or nice Saab two wheeler. I'm like, I don't care if it's a, not a Saab, um, uh, a Volvo type, you know, vehicle. And I'm like, two wheels, and it's gonna snow on Thursday, and uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Sorry, no, thank you. Even though it's, and that's the other thing. I, I told everybody that you know that I like even my snow guy. I said, yeah, just come in and clear out what you need to clear out, but don't think you have to do a great job because by tomorrow it's a spring snow. By tomorrow it's gone. Well, and, the spring snow we just had, well, they said we got four and a half inches. The ones that were really happy, you're right, with the plow people because they haven't had they haven't a lot of, a lot of these uh, companies do other things. You know, during the summer, like uh, lawn, lawn care companies, they make their money in the winter plowing. Yeah. And they, they must have been happy as hell to see that snow out there. Of course, like you said, if you just waited a couple of days, it would have been gone. But Yeah. So, yep, there we were shoveling snow a couple of days ago, and today it's going to hit 70 degrees. You know? Yeah. And that's you know, getting back to what you just said. Yeah, that's the selling point. Yeah, well, you know, winters aren't as long up here either at yeah. all. No. Um, but now, have you worked with the Chamber of Commerce at all with, with Luca? You know, to get together with him and... Oh yeah, you know, recruit. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, we we got Luca coming on here in a while, don't we? Uh, the fifteenth, he's going to be coming on. Of which, May or sixteenth? What, what month I, are we in? I think it's the sixteenth, actually. Next, 16th, next week. Next week. Next week. Yeah. So um, yeah, I just need to see. Yeah, no, we're we're. I mean, the county the county um, works with Luca all the time on all different types of things, um, and one of the biggest things is that we we've, we've. You know how you say that? As soon as you said that. I swear they spy. Greater Medina Collaborative Chamber of Commerce just pops on my phone as you and I are talking about them. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. That, that happens all the time. Well, that's 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 scary. Yeah. So um, no, we we're, we're we've been working on the, the whole promote the region. Yep. Yep. Uh, rebranding, and I know a lot of times when people think of rebranding, they think of oh, we make it look prettier, the design, the this, that. No, the rebranding is. How do we really, it really comes down to, yes, we're doing this, but we're also putting a lot of money into what you just saw. That we're that type of hit type of making people aware that we're out there telling our story. We need to tell our story better. We have such a, a, a group of gifted people in this region that know how to do that type of thing. And there's a group that's been meeting for like three and a half years now, mm -hmm. and it's going to be something, and it, it's something that needs to be continued on for the next, I'd say, ten years. They have, they have it, billboards, it, I believe, all the way down near the Connecticut border now, promoting yeah. the Keene area. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like stuck in region. traffic. Yeah, stuck in traffic. Come on up. Yeah, you know, you know, just a thrive away. Yep. You know, kind of thing, um, and or you know, it's. It's not just about tourism either. It's about telling the story about the college. I, yep. I, well, you know, people always, and I never understood this and will never understand this, understand the college, understand what it brings to our community. It brings us um, so many opportunities that if we don't take advantage of it, one is the economic impact. These kids are going into our stores, whether they're national chain or not. Those national chains are, employ, are employing local people. Or they're, if they're doing local, if they're going to our bars, our restaurants, whatever it may be, they're helping those companies stay healthy. If we're not doing that type of work, then, you know, you know that, so that's just one aspect of it. Then it's talking about young couples or young people and what it can offer to this region and then young couples. But it's also talking about middle-aged people or, or, or people with families in junior and high school in, in, in high school about the the magic of this region and if you came to come to work here there's all kinds of opportunity and last but not least yes we're a graying community but we have to recognize that in this day and age people 
our age and older are working right through, you know, on some levels, whether, whether it's 10 hours a week, five hours a week, but they're also volunteering and we need, they're valued members of our community. And so we have to, we have to tell our story to all those individuals. And, and so we've been able to, we, we helped by writing a grant with the, with the uh, collab, when I say the Menanda Collaborative, it is the Greater Chamber. And because a lot of people, that's what they know is the Chamber. Um, and we, mm-hmm. we wrote a grant and they got an Economic Development um, Administration a grant for $300,000. Businesses were able to match that with another 100000 So that's 400000 that went into this project. We gave them two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and then and then we um, from American Rescue Plan funding because we needed to really bump up the the what the work we we're doing in our community. And then another hundred thousand this year, and it's a matching. So we just got a bill the other day um, of companies that we hold hold on to the money. They um, um, of the hundred thousand, they send us what they've raised so far, the matching, mm-hmm. and then we send them the match. And so at the end of the day, you know, they, they will have a chance of, of $200,000 and we gave them a hundred of that. Cool. And, and we're going to, hopefully we're going to continue doing that because we're not out of the woods yet. And there are counties and there's cities that have said, or in towns that have said, oh, we can't do anything right now. Times are tough. I will tell you that is in my world of thinking, that is you signaling defeat. It is your step towards you are bringing your community, whatever level that you're at, towards definite a crisis because you're not willing to invest at a time when you have to be actually thinking outside. Well, there's towns in this county that, and and you know who they are probably more than I do, being the county administrator, but whenever the city approaches them, and we've talked about this before, about 100 nights in the community kitchen and you know, asking them for contributions, it's always the same towns that go, no, or, you know, we don't have a problem, we don't have homeless, all of that. It's it's a lot of the same towns that they they, they consider it spending rather than investing into their own community. But but, but that's a different type of investment. No, it is. But it's the same towns. But but my thing is, is you've got in Winchester, you've got a group over there, Winchester Economic Development Committee, who is trying to get off the ground right. in economic? The tri- uh, I, I know, I know a woman uh, on there. They're trying to break the stigma of uh, Winchester's right. had. But, and, and over the last few years, they have had some good success. The distillery, the Outlaw Brewery, um, and and there's other things that are happening down there that are exciting. But if they can get this infra, uh, this this, um, it's you know businesses coming into this site, then. That's a plus for everybody that's involved. Industrial, you know, as you know, if you can create an industrial revenue stream, a tax revenue stream, that is probably the one that's going to have the most impact on your tax bill. Oh, absolutely. Um, and and, and, and it was, we started that with Blackbrook. Yep. And it was, you know, it, it, you, a lot you of people don't do even, all the you housing. Say Black, you say Blackbrook, Chris, a lot of people out there don't, don't even know what Blackbrook is. That's the, the industrial park. Um, up off from uh, you know Route 12, You're right? Um, and you were on the council when I was on the council that we actually invested money to put water and sewer up there. Four million dollars. And if you remember, there was a lot of naysayers. Yeah. No, it's a waste of money. Nobody will come. Almost like when we uh, did um, the uh, railroad land downtown. Same yeah. thing. Invested money, water and sewer. If you build it, they will come. We didn't. We didn't do it with CNS in mind. To be honest with you. Um, it was, it was that was Smith. a wild card. Back it then. was Smith. That was a wild card. It was Smith. Yep. They were looking at um, moving. They had a site down by I think where filtering is now, and um, right. And 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 they were looking to move outside of the city, outside of the county possibly. And we came up with this plan. And but we had had and we had another company that wanted to come in and couldn't find a site. And we had, then, then there was a second and a third company that wanted to find a site on that property. And then all of a sudden, CNS said, you know, we did try to come in here with our terminals. That didn't make sense because you're in a valley. We get that. But what if we brought our, 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 um, our headquarters over here? Right. And, and we were like, yes. We'll do that. Yes. And look at what we've gotten out of that. Community partnership. Yep. Okay, and and that's what you that's what this whole promote the region is about telling our story of how we work together. 
so that you have a state-of-the-art hockey rink, guess what? You know, CNS was a huge contributor. Oh, huge. To huge that. contributor to the that. The YMCA, huge contributor to that. You know, they Indirectly had, also, uh, the Granite Gorge ski area, you know, it's a couple of employees from CNS yeah. that have invested in it. Yeah. So CNS, not only are they, you know, our largest employer, but you talk about the monies that they've donated into, well, buildings in ski areas. Um, that does not come off the tax roll. You know, that's not, uh, the taxpayers aren't on the hook for that. Any dollar that they spend, they donate like that. Yeah. But, yeah, if you remember, you just mentioned the ice arena. Remember, that was controversial. Everything's controversial. But when we did the ice arena, it was like, uh, it's going to be such a waste. And now we need a second sheet of ice. Yeah. Because it's so full. Yeah. Absolutely. So it, it's, it's just, you know, we are, and out of it, Keene State College is now going to have, they couldn't have done that. If, if we had the barn, and when I say the barn, it's the Cheshire Fairgrounds had a hockey rink for years and years. If you... If you're it was a county, barn. you know, you've probably been there. Um, like it was I a barn. It was, it was an ice arena in a barn. It was a barn because they had horse draw, uh, stuff in there in the in the, in yep. the fall and spring and and, and summer and all that. So it's, it's you know, Keene State College wouldn't have the hockey program they have that's coming in next year um, had it not been for this uh, hockey rink. And so, you know, it's, it's about you know, the, development. The, they're going to have a women's hockey team, too. And that's going to be what because women's sports have really taken off, especially yeah. the NCAA basketball. Um, you see, and I've down caught some of the Keene High hockey girls games, and um, compared to you know a decade ago, or you know, um, they've come a long ways with women's hockey. I mean, I wouldn't get on the ice with them. <laughs> Well, I yeah. couldn't get on the ice with anybody. I can't yeah, skate I know. for crap. But you know how that yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you mentioned, you can play goalie with no, us. I, I, was, I was probably one of the best goalies ever to come out of Keene. I just, just couldn't skate. Yeah, I just don't a, put skates I was on. A boot, I was a boop goalie. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Should still be like that. But anyhow, yeah. So, you know, Keene Ice, you know, perfect example of uh, where you get local industries that contribute a lot to the area. And see, that's why you can't afford to you lose local companies. You think of over the years the companies that have come and gone – Kingsbury used to be huge, mm -hmm. investing a lot of money. Markham's, which is still there, but it's not Markham's, it's not locally owned anymore. The Putnam's own it. They contribute a lot of money. It's so important to keep locally owned companies. Like if CNS, you know, if Cohen ever sold, you know, and moved, it'd be that'd be a disaster for Keene. It's it's gonna well the reality is is that in this day and age, that that there's a good chance that that can happen at some point. There is. There when, always you know, is. When you're one of the look the, at Peerless Insurance Company over the yeah, you know, yeah, and it just grew to a point where you know there's bigger dogs out there that come in and say this is what we'll offer you and you can't turn it down. Now in this situation, I don't pretend to know. I mean, I know Rick and Jan Cohen, but um, I you know I don't know how they perceive you know the future, but you know it will be interesting as as things move on in the next ten years where yep. CNS will come out of I mean they're you know in the past their their um, president of the company has been flying in and out they they don't really live here they they and they don't have to because they have the jets that can fly them in and out you know yep. and they certainly do and, every time you know every time we, for the most part every time you hear a jet over Keene it's good chances one of CNS's yeah you know I think they have two corporate jets down there now so right um but yeah you know and I just you know brought up um um, Peerless, which turned into Liberty Mutual, which these big companies come and go. So it's good. We need a couple of major employers in Keene, but I'd much rather, of course, we can't lose CNS, but rather having a company come in that hires 400 people, I'd rather see 10 companies that hire 40 people. Because if one of them well, don't make it, you still get the, the rest the, of them. That's the magic of, the, the, of Hannah Grimes. The entrepreneurship yep, yep. You know, Small center companies. that they have there and what they've developed over the years is, in my mind, the future. These individuals that have a dream, that are getting support that they need to be able to develop this this vision that they have, and that turns into, it may start out with one one person that goes to three, that goes to eight, and all of a sudden they're at 40. You don't know how you really got there, you know, but you do. You know, we, we started, we received a grant now almost 10 years ago, um, and it was to help Develop a program where where 
individuals would go into into the home of individuals that are at risk at out of district placement now the city the school board that you sit on has kids that are in placement right now they can't be in the school district for some reason mm -hmm. yep it doesn't a lot of times it has nothing to do with the school most of the time it has nothing to do with the schools the schools are able to deal with the child right it's when they go home the parents either one they're both working trying to balance everything one person working trying to generate enough revenue to keep the family afloat whatever the situation is it doesn't matter they need support and help we were able to put that we were able it's, it's called connected families new hampshire it started here we said to the you know said to, i was on the steering committee and i said listen the county's hosting this grant at the end of four years if we don't find a funding stream it goes away the county's not going to take it on unless we find a funding stream. So we met with the state of New Hampshire, Department of Health and Human Services. They were able to, to, to give us the funding we need a daily rate for the individuals. And they liked it so much, they said, can you do it in this county, in this county? And they said, okay, yeah, we could do that. Now we're across the state. And this is something that started with one individual. By the end of this year, it's going to be 40. It pays for itself and then generates on top of that revenue that goes back to the uh, to, to, ta to the tax base, the fund, uh, the fund balance, um, and that's what you need to do in this day and age, and 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 that's what Hannah Grimes does every single day. They create our future, and I really do believe we need to do whatever we can. And I know that somebody like Cody Morrison at um, Manhattan Economic Development Corporation understands that and is looking at ways that we could build that next building, that building that has you know, has the ability to have a company that needs 10,000 square feet and there's four companies in there and it's 40,000 square feet. Yep. You know, that's our next step for these companies. Look at, uh, Kenny Abbott started a company. Uh, it's over in Fitzwilliam, AB, some, I can't, mm -hmm. I, but I, 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 he started it out and he was working in this little brick building and now it's got this whole big building in Fitzwilliam that was empty because the company, you know, that wasn't doing well or whatever the reason they left and he's been able to go in yeah, and on, give a rebirth it's on red and route 12 if i remember right yeah but those are success success stories that we have to look at and figure out you know and and there's players in this community like like um uh, muscoma bank and uh and the wall bank of walpole right a uh, savings bank of walpole and those those are community partners that that's all they really uh, that's the big thing is they want to help these small businesses thrive. And 310 Marlboro is another example of multi, multi little companies in there growing. Yep. Um, and also, you know, kind of coordinating with that. So you got these businesses, and which are people and families, to say, okay, you know, come to Keene, which a lot of people in New Hampshire, they, they only see the other side of Temple Mountain. Literally, if you live in, you know, Connecticut, New York, whatever, companies are trying to get up here they look at new hampshire we're kind of the forgotten corner i mean hell even concord forgets about us sitting over here yeah. in our in our little corner keen for the most part thrives but you're right chris we thrive because we work at it it's certainly not because of location you mm -hmm. know you can be a town somewhere what they call it, you know the triangle over between manchester nashua and portsmouth you're going to succeed just because of where you're located i mean you know, you've got the traffic, you've got the population. Keen, we're, we're over here kind of with, well, you've got Lebanon, but they pretty much live off Dartmouth-Hitchcock Hospital. I guess the, the town closest to us geographically and size-wise, I guess in a way would be Claremont, and, but they're closer to 91, but they struggle. And a lot of their struggles are self-inflicted. They, they haven't been forward-thinking enough over the years, but I'm not gonna worry about Claremont. So when you look at Keene, when Hannah Grimes does it or the Chamber does, it's like, okay, you're going to convince some families to come to Keene, and that's why we're such a great community. It's like, okay, well, what does Keene have? Right. You know, well, sports-wise, no, we don't have professional teams, but we have the Swamp Bats. You know, we have some great baseball in the summer. You've got, you've got the college sports team, which now are nationally recognized. Yeah. You know, the hockey club team, which is now going to be a Division Three team. Um, the basketball team, you know, which which made it to the nationals, um, even local high schools now all improved on their on their sports. 
So, you know, you look at that from families with children or, you know, young adults coming up. Um, so you have your sports, outdoor sports, recreation. Mm -hmm. So people talk about, you know, the bike trails that are out there. You know, they're, they're important to take care of. Entertainment downtown. The Colonial Theater is so important to this city, you know, a lot of people don't realize it. Um, you've got entertainment. You've got great shows. You don't have to drive to Boston. You still can. But, I mean, you can see quality shows at the Colonial Theater. And, of course, we have our nice downtown, mm -hmm. you know. So things don't happen by accident. And that's why I kind of point out Claremont. They should be thriving more than Keene does. They're closer to Lebanon. They're closer to 91. They should be a thriving community. And they're not. They're always stumbling. And it's kudos to Keene, um, to the county, to the schools, to the city, and to all the volunteers that really put their hand of grimes. Um, it doesn't happen by accident. It's work. Keene yeah. survives because of work, not because of location, you know, geogra geographic location. We're constantly trying to figure out when crisis hits, how do we get through that moment in time? And if we can see something on the horizon that we think, and also strategic planning on what the future holds. Whether that's through a document or through discussion, we are constantly looking at what we can do, whether that's the city, the towns. I mean, there's so many, uh, you know, I, I, I see so many exciting things happening in towns throughout the region. Look at Swansea. Look at what they've done. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've really done some really good things in their community. And Swansea, you know, compared to, I'm not going to pick on the other towns in Cheshire County, but I'll give them credit, especially with housing. They haven't done the NIMBY thing. Of course, they have, one thing about Swansea, there is a lot of flat, buildable land in Swansea. Yeah. Keene, we don't have a lot of buildable land left, uh, flat land anyhow. Swansea doesn't, to their credit, because, you know, there's always the, a flip side of the coin. It's like, well, if you build it, they will come, but it also means you're going to have more uh, school-age kids coming in, which raises your, you know, yeah. your, your yeah. cost of your schools. But the offset is you're bringing in, you're probably going to bring in more industry. You know, you're going to bring in more revenues. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll do a little tip of the hat to Swansea as far as uh, housing goes. Because Keene needs them to build. If you're going to have industry in Keene succeed, the towns around Keene need Bedford more housing. Bedford has succeeded for a lot of reasons. But the biggest issue for Bedford is they really understood that they are a bedroom community to Manchester. Yep. And yep. if they built a strong school system, yeah, uh, um, you are and, correct and, there. And that that they would have more people willing to move out to the suburbs, and and because it's literally a few minutes, you know. Bedford you know, used Goss to go to Manchester Goss, West. Gosstown yeah. on the other hand, they 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 they're getting there. Bedford was much more aggressive. And that's what, what I mean. They, that area, Chris. That that you know, just I guess west of uh, east of Milford, you know, and then all the way to Portsmouth, then yeah. going up all the way to Concord, the Triangle. There is no reason that any town should be successful. Of course, if you go back to the 1970, I think, um, Keene was the fifth largest city in New Hampshire. Yeah. With community-wise. It's, it's now what? 12th, 13th? 13th, something like that. Yeah. Um, because... I mean, Claremont's 13,000 people. It's, it's yeah. not really close to what our size is, but it's the closest... You know, Hanover. I mean, I, I would say that Concord is probably the one that's, and they're bigger than us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Concord. Yeah. Concord's Concord's got about forty thousand now. Concord's almost double the size of Keene now. Yeah. Um, but you know, so you, you know, Keene's population, we're, we're a little over twenty three thousand, like that. It's been about ten years of the same population. It's been forever the same I population. Know. You and I were young. We were about twenty four, twenty five thousand. Yeah, we're still young. It's just all relative. Yeah. Um, no, but you're right. no, we're not. Population, population of Keene's been the, been the same forever. You you need, and when your population stays the same, it means it's aging out too. So you need the young bodies to come in. We need the industries. Um, you know, we need high school kids to stay here yeah. but you have to give them they have to have you know, a job you know it's a, the deceiving thing is the numbers that came out the last time around showed that cheshire county was losing people what was factored in you know i looked into the numbers a little bit and what was factored in was the was the college and when the college downgraded right their population, yeah, it, was, it, it, it was it reduced, was skewed it was it, skewed. it re reduced the, it, it showed that we we're losing and if they just did straight us that we were actually, the, you know, we were, we were right where we were supposed to be in growing. We gained a little bit. But but it wasn't as on the level that we need to. Right. We have more deaths than we do have births, and that's a problem. Yep, and it's about employment. I mean, you have to have places. You know, the, the 
um, as far as um, you know, living it, you know, and um, but um, you, you have to you have to have employment. So when we talk about all these places, as you said, with the chamber and um, you're talking about people down south coming up here, we've got to have the jobs to give them. Right now, those are over on the triangle part of the state. Yeah. But we need to create, you're right with the hand of grimes, you need to create these little places that start small. Yeah. You know, you, Keene is not going to get the place come in that's looking for 400 people now. Yeah. It's not going to happen. The, the, your company owner, you look at it, it's like, you don't have the workforce. Yeah. So we need, we need the incubator companies, you know, coming in here. So, yeah. but, you know, that's one thing great about Keene. That's why, you know, I'm still here. You're still here, you know, born and raised here. And, you know, outside of living four years in an underwater tin can, um, this is it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, So you, you want to make it better. So, yeah, it, you know, kind of, we'll, we'll trend a little bit here, segue, because we've been babbling pretty incoherently, pretty well for almost 40 minutes now. Yeah, um, I, but I actually think we've said some good stuff now. This yeah, might, I mean, other might feel differently, but, but we're talking yeah, whatever. about issues that really do. It, matter, it matters to Keene. What do we do to make Keene survive? Yeah. You know, we can't, and... I was driving through the my old neighborhood, the North End, yesterday. Old neighborhood, um, you know, a couple of houses, and sadly, I remember. When you say the North End, tell people what that means. Is that Sullivan Street, Washington yeah, Street? Yeah, basically area? north of the rec center, up yeah. Washington Street. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It kind of goes out to your neck of the woods, Gilsum Street, mm -hmm. and then Washington Street, George Street, Sullivan Street, but basically, yeah, Washington Street, the heart of it, yeah. and Roosevelt School was the heart of the North End back in the day yeah which now it's going to be housing which is great repurposed building yeah excellent um but going through some of the, the side streets and especially across from the old roosevelt school where i went to school which is nice that it's going to be a promise there's a couple of houses there that are just in disrepair and i remember in elementary school some friends that lived there and they were just nice houses mm -hmm. and um that's one thing we need to do is is get get buyers in there that can you know repurpose or you know fix up these homes um and you do see some of the older neighborhoods now being built up and bought which is great you know you go through some of the side streets now and you see people uh roxbury street's a perfect example there's some nice old homes down roxbury street that over the last few years you're kind of ugh, falling in disrepair and you see somebody came in most a couple times from out of town because you know they well, bought it for about a quarter million in their town it would have been a million dollar home well it's north and south lincoln you've seen that yeah. that's that's probably the for me that's north and south lincoln street are probably the two streets that um, that show the rebirth of a, of a neighborhood that was struggling um at some points as as towns age out and i i credit lincoln school becoming whatever it is today i know it was waldorf at one point i don't know what it is exactly today but I, I credit that as being the, the, the turning stone for, you know, that, that really helped re give rebirth to that, those communities. Because what I understand, a lot of individuals that have had students attending those, that school moved to that street. Yeah. Which is good. Yep. No, you're right. That's, that's once again, you know, your old stomping grounds. Some of those older homes, you're seeing them fixed up. Well, and it doesn't, you know, the work you all did with the park um, um uh, carpenter field mm -hmm. is, oh that helps really. it, it, that helps uh, uh, incredibly so and it just creates an atmosphere i mean even the american america house american house mm -hmm. you know that taking that building and and restoring it and then turning it in and adding on to it to what it is today was huge if we could just somehow at some point get the properties that's owned by that individual so yeah. that you all can then move forward and and do or somebody can do something with that property i think we're going to be even that that will change that whole area because you, you know you've you know we've we invested in putting again i was on the council this this was in the last few years i was on the council we invested in the parking lot the dirt parking lot behind cypress street Right. That's what it was. Was a dirt parking lot where people knew you could park. If you were you were from here, you knew you could park there for free. Yep. And um, and now it's got beautiful buildings on it. It's got the co-op on it. It's got the Marriott on it. It's got other buildings on there. And then you put the basketball courts in. You've got a hundred nights down there. You've got all this other area, and that's helping those that area. Good segue, too. Chris. We jumped on that because we just talked about 
Carpenter Field on the east side and some of the homes being built up and having schools out there and having a nice park, which is huge, especially this summer when the rugby team gets going. And I'm looking forward to the rugby games out there because that'll draw a crowd. Yeah. You know, and I got to work with them to draw crowds in. Let's do an event. Because at, at this point, the rugby team doesn't draw that big of a crowd. That's one thing that needs to be marketed. Come down. The they side need may- to put a, a, a beer tent down there because... I remember the rugby games. We used to host them in uh, in a house that I lived in uh, when I was at Keene State. You know, uh, uh, Chris, and, we're trying to draw people and not <laughs> scare people away. Yeah, yeah. Um, they used to have great parties. Ah, uh, yep. Back in your younger day. Yeah, they used to have great parties. Um, so I mean, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about that because you talked about you know the skate park's going to be going in soon. We got we got monies to tear down the building. We finally got a contractor to tear down the old findings building. So. You know that's gonna you're gonna be a skate park there. You know a nice skate park. I hope it's. I hope that we didn't cut corners on the skate park to make sure we have parking, because the skate park can be a real place. And I hope we do cement and not this wood structures with all. Oh, this it's stuff. gonna be. It's gonna be. They, yeah, I, I to their they credit, would. they raised some good money for that. Actually, they did. Yeah. Yes, they right. did. Yeah. You know, the, the city, the city, there's always a city contribution, but the money for the and dog see- park, the money for the skate park, the money for the Frisbee park, locally raised I, I, money. I, and I'll never, I mean, I think it's great, but I shouldn't, it should be that you all in the city budget should put money into it because we need to evolve as a community. And mm-hmm. if skate park is something that kids get, get can enjoy, um, it, it'll it's be, no it, different than Wheelock Park having a pool. It's right. no different than him, them having a fields or little league baseball fields or tennis courts. What's the difference? Well, there won't you be can't park, tell park, me. No, it'll be. Look, it's, it's going to be the maintenance is going to be in the budget because Parks and Rec is going to have to help keep it up. It's just like yeah, but to build it, if we cut corners because we didn't want. Oh, to there's put no, money there's into no it? cutting corners. Oh. They, 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 they raised more money than what they thought they were going to raise. I'm not concerned about that at all. I hope I'm so. really not. I hope so because I've heard different. And I've heard that they were frustrated, and it's not a. It's just I don't know what what is. I don't know. You know, I just want I I want every the, the masterpiece that you guys have developed down there is something pretty cool. Yep, it really it is. Is it a good job? And and this is the one of the last pieces down there, and you know, and if we could get at some point Whitney Brothers or no, the, is it Findings that owns the other side of the. There's the basketball court, no, I think then there's open land. Yeah, I think Whitney, Whitney Brothers bought it from Findings. Yeah, I have to check. Because I know Findings owned it at one point. Yeah, I have to check on who owns that back that, that back Because there's really there. not a lot you can do there, no. except for make it look prettier. That's it. You know, put out some wild because it's going to flood. Wild, wild it's flower. Flood. It's a flood zone. Yeah. Put out some wild flowers and make it look pretty. Yeah. Um, but as I keep trying to allude to, as I get back to the east side, and you're on the board of directors for One Hundred Night Shelter. Yeah. Now, I met with the East Side neighbors. They meet once a month. They have a neighborhood meeting. Kudos to the East Side neighbors. Um, great. That's how a neighborhood... You were going to tell me when the next meeting was because I was going to just show up because I... Uh, again... first, 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 first Monday of the month. Okay. First Monday of the month at the American House. Okay. Um, usually at 6 o'clock. But I'll, I'll make sure you're on the... Uh, I'll make sure you're on the list. But anyhow, this last meeting we had, the, uh, the director... The, uh, the director of um, 100 Night Shelter, the new director, yeah, um, introduced herself and Becca? Mindy, the outgoing director, was there. And kudos to both of them. Showed up, answered questions. Um, new director, you know, seems to be, you know, right on board. The neighbors expressed their frustrations what they've had, mm-hmm. um, but it's working out. It's I know in the beginning it wasn't pretty, um, you know, growing pains, a few speed bumps in the road. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes you get blamed for everything that happens when some of it's not your fault. I get that too, but the the, the it's working with the neighborhood. You know, they're bl- it's going to blend. They're blending right in. Um, I know when the when there's going to the spring cleanups coming up. Um, is that this weekend? A couple of spring cleanups coming up. Um, and I know Hundred Nights is going to be volunteering people to help with that. That's what you do. Yeah, you, I think the misnomer be- down down there is though. When I went to the first Blastos meeting, uh, the first meeting in the Blastos room. I was there. Right. The majority of the people in that room were there because they support. They live in the community, live there, right. but they support what 100 Nights was bringing forward. They were there so they could learn more. 
and be and start developing that relationship. Yes, there was a few people that were that were angry um, about certain things that were happening. Some of them outside of the norm of like you know of I mean. Here's the thing, like they wanted us to put in bathrooms. Well, we have bathrooms that people can use during the day, you know, and but it's the city should be putting in the bathrooms, not us. We have bathrooms in our facilities that people can use. They have the they have the thing. But but those are things that people just didn't know. And by the end, there was only a few people. It was a Yimby meeting. Yes, in our backyard. It really was. No, it was the, uh, it, it, it went the well. takeaway. It was, it was the take that's the takeaway takeaway I had. There were some people that 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 there was there was a few people that were NIMBY, but most of the people were people that had just real concerns, real concerns of people that had mental health issues, people that were that were showing up, you know, threatening them, whatever it may be. I don't know if they're part of 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 Hundred Nights or not, but we need to take we need to listen to that. And I appreciate if if what I'm hearing that Becca and Mindy met with them and, and continued, that's the dialogue we need to continue to have to turn that all to Yimby. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I always say silence is never an option because all yeah. that does is do finger pointing. I agree. So, you know, kudos. Kudos. They showed up. Uh, yeah, you got to talk together. It, it can't it, it can't be over, uh, you know, over the radio show or it, it, on it, Facebook. You can't and you can't. You need to be able to if you're 100 nights, you need to be able to hear them. They may people sometimes, especially in this day and age, can say the cruelest say it in the most harsh way possible you need to understand that there's some level of fear in that conversation and they need to work you need to walk them through those fears to see if they can you guys can find common ground and and i'm hoping that with becca becca has that personality yes she does and i'm hoping that she can continue those conversations yep no having met with her um i think uh i think she's going to be a great addition to hundred nights and a great spokesperson yeah. You know, because Hundred Nights is, you know, the way it's come along. Let, let's face it, there was no set direction. It was just kind of, it it worked its way together, and mm -hmm. it, it was where it was. It, you know, it, it got large, and now having a, the, the new director in there, nothing against Mindy, she. Yeah, but no matter no matter where you put that facility, I mean, that was the third, that was the third parcel of land, that that. that oh, that's definitely going to be a NIMBY issue. No, but 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 that was the yeah, it was the third por parcel of land that they looked at. And there was always something, an issue of something, and a lot of it had nothing to do with Hundred Nights. You know, there was the yoga studio, um, you know, behind, over by Jake's, at, you know, that 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 gray house behind the apartments mm -hmm. that just were built up on the old uh, Keene Middle School's uh, fields, soccer fields out there. And um, there was another site that I can't remember where the other site, but for whatever reason, those didn't happen. But this third site, Tom, um, I can't remember his last name, but Tom. Um, Tom's Garage or whatever it is yeah. that was. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, he yeah. was great. He wanted to do whatever he could to help make this be a success, um, and and making a reality. And, and worked with the worked with those people that led the purchase of, and then the build out happened, and then the rip fundraising happened, and hopefully, can you know everything continues to work to move forward. Homelessness sadly is not going away, nope. and sadly, on some levels, the burden of it happens to be where the services are, and the services are here in the city, whether it's about Mananoc Family Service, 100 Nights, Community Kitchen, and other services you know, in the community, Cheshire Medical, whatever it may be, this is where it's all right here in the city of Keene. So there's a burden you know, that is put on the city of Keene. I get that. Um, I don't know what the, the answer is to all of it moving forward, but I get that there's a burden, and I, I speak openly about that. Well, I think the the mayor Khan has met with the other the other mayors of New Hampshire a couple times now, and um, trying to you know implore the state to get involved more. That the hubs of the counties, you know, Keene, Concord, Claremont, Nashua, um, you know, we're taking it on the chin, uh, cost wise, and we just want more help from the state. It's like yes, the problem's not going away, mm -hmm. and you know, I get it. Some of the towns are like, you know. We're all aware the towns quietly tell the people, go to Keene, you know, you'll, you'll be fine. It's like, okay, you're right. Um, where, where more of the services are here, they're going to be attracted to the area. But the state can't keep, you know, turning a blind eye to it, which that's how the state operates but they can. anyhow. But they um, can because it's not, they can because they will always find a reason. 
Yeah. So th- th- good, good for uh, you know Jay Khan and the other mayors, um, Republicans and Democrat. You know they all have something in common. Now hopefully, you know they can get the governor, which he's been resistant, um, and the legislature, who's been resistant. Where's the bill? To, to, you got, didn't you guys put some money forward to do something? Yeah. Yeah, six hundred thousand. Um, I thought it was closer to nine hundred thousand. Yeah, probably up there, probably up there by now. But it was six. Um, I believe it was six. I'll have to go back and look. Um, but it's not going to be a one-time thing if we don't, if, if things don't change. Um, and, and part of it also was Chris. You know, we had a lot of people living illegally on people's properties behind Hannaford's, behind Coles. Mm-hmm. Um, they were trespassing, and the the property owners wanted them out. Well, they got to go somewhere, and. And now we're putting some of them up into hotels, which costs money. Yeah. Um, so, which, which also gets the you know you, you know it's it's going to be interesting to see if your costs go down in the summer. Now that down at campsites are starting to you know get rid. Well, they'll to pop back up. up again. There's going to be illegal campsites. You just but there's going to be also campsites, legal campsites, legal campsites, and that's you know a lot of the families that's what they do. They try to save money because. They can for two weeks at a time, and then they jump to another camp, and they map it out. I've talked to families. They map it out. It's incredibly sad. It is. But, you know, in this one family, I remember talking, um, the mother works during the day. The father works um, at night, and that's just the, you know, so because they had some younger kids, so the, somebody always had to be there kind of thing, and it's just how it worked out. So the mother gets home in time for dinner and put the kids to bed while the father's with the young kids you know, as they go into school, maybe they can, you know, that's what they were looking towards, getting normal hours, but they knew this is what we had to do, but they still weren't generating enough revenue to be able to afford an apartment. I know that's the highest demand right now, talking to Mindy and, and the new director, um, and you being on the board, 100 nights, it's, it's families. It's families that are looking for places that, it's one thing if it's a single guy, single guys will find a way to survive. I mean, I'm not saying... Mm-hmm. It's a great way to do it, but they only have to worry about themselves. But if you're the the breadwinner for a family, I mean that's tough. And I know, you know, trying to I, I know they're talking about that's the toughest vacancies to, to fill is for families. Mm-hmm. You know, and hundred nights gets that demand for families. Yeah, I and mean, of course, there, there are a lot we of only have home. and we only have so many beds that were allowed allotted. Do we have more room for more beds? Yeah, of course we do, but we only have you know so many. And um, Ian, to receive state money, you know, which you have to have every all kinds of different the two-on-one system. That, 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 they, you know, that means that you have to say if you have a, an available bed. doesn't mean you have to take somebody. Right. But you have to well, post I know that. And, the, and it's, very, it's very infrequent, even though the stories have been said, because I actually asked what the numbers were. And it's very infrequent that, that there's anybody outside of the city, uh, the, the county, as a whole, that you know, takes that that room. There's very, very infrequent. They can push back and they can they can say no, and that's what they've done. Right, and I think now, since everything's hit the fan here over the last you know couple of years, especially, um, I know there's a better relationship with um, with Hundred Nights and the city manager. I know there was some friction. Mm-hmm. You know, you get that. Um, and um, you're right; it's a two one one system. A room becomes available, you put it on the two one one. Right. But I know there's better communication now with 100 Nights and the city manager if a room is becoming available because if Keene has a family in a hotel, which mm-hmm. is expensive, and, the, and a family room is going to open up 100 Nights, the Keene family should have first dibs at it. Yeah. And the, but that takes better communication. And I know that the communication is a lot better right now. Mm-hmm. So I guess the bottom line is with 100 Nights, the communication of things are a lot better right now. You know, the early tensions... I think are, uh, are, have been resolved from what I see. And like I said, going back to the east side neighbors, having a meeting once a month and inviting them, that's great, you know? Um, because once again, you gotta be in the same room talking. Yeah. You know, so that's going well. Yeah, geez, Chris, we only have like two minutes left. We've, we've babbled pretty good. There is an opening on the city council if you live in Ward 1. Um, it's about where's, to open where's, up. Where's Ward 1 cover? It's basically down Marlboro Street. And then if you go down to the airport. Yeah. Okay, so kind of picture that quadrant. Yeah. You know, that's Ward 1. It also uh, encompasses, you know, a good chunk of Keene State and where a lot of the Keene State students live. Mm-hmm. I'm as in one. And I met a young man the other night. He's in school. He's actually 
he was a student of one of my son's classes. Mm-hmm. My son teaches law at Keene State. And um, he's going to put his name in. He's a junior. He's going to put his name in for the city council position as a college student. I think that'd be great. So I, I talked to him because the, it, that, to him the is, other night. That's a... Is that is he in the middle of a four year term or is it or He's kind is it of a, two years? Um, it, it would be it would be a two year term basically. He'd be finishing out Raleigh's. Two he'd years. be finishing out the first the Raleigh, half because of the, yeah the okay yeah. He'd, he'd be he'd finishing out the first half. So you know just under a two year term he, he would be filling out. I you know he hasn't formally put his name in yet because the the opening is just about to formally open up. But I did speak with him the other night and I joked with him. I said. You know, all the council will be glad to give you information if you ask, but if you want correct information, speak to me. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Um, so he, he is going to put his name in, um, and, and good luck to him. I mean, is there other people that wins it open? Uh, I believe what's the date? I believe this week or next week. Um, then it opens up. It'll be open for two weeks, and then they. Uh, then they come speak to the council for a five-minute little, yeah. you know, Song why I want the position. Yeah. But the good news is you can run for council. You don't have to go out and knock on doors. You don't have to buy signs. Yeah. You literally just have to speak to the other 14. Yeah. It is good, though, if they talk to some neighbors, and the neighbors call the city councilor and say, I'm vouching for this person. Yeah. Um, but, no, he seemed an articulate young man, um, you know, uh, well-intentioned. Yeah. And um, loves Keene. You know, he moved here. I think he said Dover. I think he's from Dover, and he he's been here, and he loves Keene. So we'll see. Um, I know there was a couple of East Side neighbors that were thinking about running for it. Yep. But you know we'll find out. So anyhow, if you live in Ward One, and you uh, did we just run out of time? Oh, did that just go to great, zero? Yeah. Have a great. Then we're out of here. Have a great week. Have a great week. Run for City Council. I thought you said two minutes, and that was like. We-